Hello everyone and welcome to PC Retro Tech. So this week's video is one that I've actually wanted to film for a very long time but I just haven't found time to fit it into the filming schedule until now. Uh, so I want to explore two different kinds of ROM BASIC that were available in the early 1980s. And the first is on this IBM PC5150 and if I zoom in here you can see that it says IBM Personal Computer BASIC Copyright IBM Corp 1981. And a lot of people don't realize that the IBM actually came with BASIC built in. And it's actually one of the reasons why I don't use emulators myself for retro computing, because sometimes you can just miss uh, some of the more interesting features of the genuine machines. And in fact, in a later video, I'm actually going to show another example of this, which I think you'd probably miss uh, in a lot of emulators. So the second BASIC I want to look at is the Commodore 64 BASIC. And of course the Commodore 64 and other 8-bit home computers are machines that more people would associate with having a ROM BASIC. Uh, if you have a look here it says Commodore 64 BASIC V2. And one of the things that you would do when you first got a machine like this home from the shop, if you didn't have any games or cartridges to plug straight in, is you'd type in a simple BASIC program to amuse yourself. And, of course, anyone who's ever done this probably knows the simple 10 print hello, 20 go to 10. Uh, and that would probably be the first basic program that you'd type in. But, in today's video, I want to have a look at what would be the second basic program that you'd type in. Uh, perhaps something that does some graphics or something a little bit more interesting. And let's just see how far we can go with, say, a few lines of basic, maybe up to half a page. So this is probably the most impressive of the short one-line programs, although it's cheating a little bit in that that colon allows you to get two lines worth onto a single line. Uh, so this will print a random maze, uh, and basically what it's doing is just switching between two characters in the character set. Uh, just be a little bit careful when you enter this one, that plus sign there, uh, it's pretty easy to press shift plus, which also prints as a plus on the screen, but it will be a syntax error when you actually try to enter it. Uh, but let's run this and see what it looks like. Uh, so yeah, it's printing a random maze. Uh, it's really slow. You can see that uh, even though this is running at full speed, uh, it's really printing uh, only you know one line of characters per second, roughly. Uh, so it's very slow basic. Uh, but anyway, it's a really nice effect. Uh, the interesting thing is the effect is not quite as nice on the IBM PC. So here is the equivalent program, the IBM PC, and you can see it's a little bit different because the characters that we want are 47 and 92. And so you have to start with 47 and add a number which is either 0 or 45 randomly. Uh, so here's what that looks like on the PC. And you can see it doesn't really look as impressive, and I think this is just because the characters don't line up as well as they do on the Commodore 64. Anyway, I thought it would just be interesting to try it here as well, since uh, it's a similar program and very simple to type in. So there are very many variations on this particular one, and I'm just going to show you a couple of them that are more interesting. Uh, so the first prints a kind of check pattern, and it looks exactly the same, it's just using a different pair of characters. And so if I run this, uh, you can see that you get kind of like random walls or a random check pattern. Uh, which is also kind of uh, pretty to look at. So here's a second variation on the same theme and it's basically using a similar trick that we used on the IBM uh, to jump between two characters that are not next to each other. And I describe this as a kind of pavement effect. So let me just run that. And as you can see it looks like a kind of uh, paving effect where you would have di bricks of different size uh, say if you're walking through a city or something like that. Uh, so as I said, there's a lot of variations on this theme, and I'm not going to go through them all, uh, but these are the most interesting ones that I found. So this one's actually a random sound generator, and I have to say it's not very realistic sounding. It's supposed to be a piano, but I'm not actually sure whether the SID chip in this is actually working uh, very well at the moment. Uh, anyway, it's, uh, it sets up a, supposedly a piano sound and then plays through random sounds, although it seems to only be doing uh, two different uh, notes, which is not very interesting in my opinion, but uh, I guess you can't expect too much from a you know six-line program. So the next one is just a very basic program to animate a kind of pendulum or something like that, moving left and right on the screen. And it's a program that you would have found in a lot of books uh, explaining how to program BASIC back in the day. 
and all it's doing here is just moving to a particular location on the screen and drawing some pluses uh, and obviously filling the rest of the line with spaces. And I marvel at how slow this is. I mean, it's just computing a sign function and drawing some characters on the screen. Uh, and it's really incredibly slow. There are no extra delays in this. By the way, if you want to cancel a program, uh, you can just press Control Break uh, in BASIC here, and CLS will clear the screen. And of course, you can list your program by typing list. Uh, some basic things that you really need to know uh, when programming BASIC on the IBM PC. So this short little program is actually from the IBM BASIC manual and it's supposed to draw a shooting star uh, but when I run it uh, you'll see it says syntax error on line 20 and the reason for this is that they actually left a lot of the drawing routines out of the ROM uh, on the IBM PC. I guess they were serious business users after all. Uh, but seriously, I guess they did this to save space, and the way you were intended to use this was to actually load BASIC from disk, and I think that it actually would then use the ROM routines if they're available, but if not, uh, then it would supplement them with uh, various uh, functions on the disk itself. And so, unfortunately, this makes the IBM PC a little bit dull because you can't do any drawing with ROM BASIC. Uh, and the Commodore 64 really had a big advantage here since uh, you could certainly do drawing uh, with the ROM BASIC in the Commodore 64. But IBM didn't leave you completely without fun and games. There was actually a sound command that was in the ROM BASIC. And so this is a BASIC program from the manual which is supposed to do a glissando according to uh, the documentation. So let's run that and see what it sounds like. So I would personally call it a siren myself, and very irritating one at that, uh, but that's the sound program. So we're back to the Commodore 64, and this little program actually changes the border colours uh, in a way that you'll see in a moment. Uh, but it's a tricky little program because uh, there isn't a function for doing this in ROM BASIC. Uh, instead what it does is it waits until the uh, raster beam is in the border area, and then it actually uh, pokes some uh, values to change the border colors uh, and now of course it's not actually perfect let me just run this and you'll see what it looks like and if you look really closely you'll discover that it's not quite even and uh, the way that you can actually fix this is to insert colons into the program because it's an interpreted language uh, just adding an extra character into the program will give it just a little extra delay and that can be enough to make uh, the difference between something looking good and uh, not looking good. Uh, the other thing is that if you don't have the end of line 10 in here uh, then you will get the same effect but it will jitter around all over the place and the reason for this is because the machine is constantly checking interrupts and it will be especially bad if you press any keys. Uh, so by switching the interrupts off you can actually um, make it so that everything's really stable uh, the way it looks at the moment. So this is some kind of demo effect really and you'd normally do this in assembly language of course uh, but it also works in BASIC. So this little program's quite long but uh, it fits on a page essentially and it also is one of the more interesting graphical programs. Uh, you can see it draws a really nice pattern on the screen. Uh, this is done by poking uh, values directly into memory uh, but of course uh, there's an enormous number of uh, you know variable updates that are used to compute the values for the little pattern that's drawn here and I think it looks really quite impressive uh, given that it's only you know about 15 lines long so here's another full page one on the IBM PC and of course it's text based uh, so it prints the lyrics of the song 99 Bottles of Beer on the Wall and it's actually so slow that you can just about sing along as it scrolls. Uh, so I won't let it finish because it takes forever but you can see that it scrolls through all of the words of the song and then I think at the end it actually just repeats and goes back to the start again. And in fact I was wrong, this is how it finishes. Uh, it says go to the store and buy some more 99 Bottles of Beer on the Wall. 
So this is the last little program for today, and it's a little sprite program on the Commodore 64. Uh, some of the code is obscured at the moment, but once I start it running, uh, you'll see the sprite starts to move across the screen. And it's a very, very short program, but it contains all the data for the sprite, uh, the code to display the sprite, and of course, the control logic to move it about. Now, you're not really meant to use it like this. You're meant to put your own data in and have a nice picture for the sprite, uh, and of course, put your own control logic in, maybe write a little game, something like that. It's just meant as an example program, uh, but it does make a good illustration of why the Commodore 64 remained such a powerful force in the marketplace for so long, even whilst the IBM PC was becoming more and more powerful. And that is that there was this sprite hardware in the machine and of course there were raster interrupts and a music chip as well. And that really meant that you could do a lot with it and you could do a lot without very much code as well. Uh, so it was really a very sophisticated machine uh, very early on, uh, which the IBM PC was not as we've seen today. Uh, but of course uh, there were some disadvantages as well. Uh, the keyboard wasn't quite as spacious it really wasn't uh, used very much in business, uh, whereas the IBM PCs were. Uh, but anyway, that's all I really wanted to show you for today. Um, I hope that you enjoyed this one, and I know that there are many, many more of these small little basic programs online that you can type in and try yourself on your own ROM basic machine. Uh, so I hope that you'll enjoy doing that and that you've enjoyed watching this video. So thanks very much for watching and we hope to see you in the next video. Bye.